My name is Rhea Dixon. Welcome to Cloud Watching and how we can create more useful logs and alerts using AWS. I say with AWS because that's what my team uses. This is applicable to the same type of monitoring that would be provided by any cloud platform like Google's cloud platform or Azure, if whatever their comparable thing is. A little bit about me. At the fake Riri on Twitter and on Instagram, and I like to post interesting, you know, tips and cool things I found, and also random shenanigans concerning Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, whatever. I am a software engineer by day for a company called Veriship. Veriship, this is what this lovely symbol is. Um, we are a parcel intelligence company. We use data and um, try to save our customers money with their shipping carriers. So when I say carriers, I mean UPS, FedEx, DHL. We will go in and log in as our customers and download their invoices and then track every single package on every single invoice for them and figure out whether it was late, if it was damaged, if they were charged Saturday delivery, but the package was delivered on Monday or Friday and get the money back. That is the whole premise is to save our customers money. And I work on the back end doing C Sharp, .NET, Python type applications that power the little robots that go out and do this for us. Everything else I do by night, I am a mom of a wonderful, terrible toddler. He, is, he will be three at the end of June, so yay me, three natures. Um, I'm also the Diversity and Inclusion Director for Kansas City Women in Tech. You saw my founder, Jay Waddella, speaking at the keynote. And yes, I was previously afflicted by over logging. I will tell you about the whole horribleness of that all when we get to the great debacle of 2018. So, <laughs> why you should listen to me. First of all, I have spent over a year playing with CloudWatch. I've been a software engineer for a year and a half. And in that time, that's how I learned how to use CloudWatch, what it was what all it could do, how to use it properly. Visibility was our first project, well, it was my first project when I got on my team, and so visibility wasn't something that we were doing very well, and when I got there, the great debacle of 2018 happened, and visibility became priority, and it has saved us so much time. I also could talk to you about the purpose and of centralizing your logs and using AWS or another cloud platform. I could talk to you about it all day, every day for like weeks and weeks. So let me tell you a little bit about us and about what happened, you know, how Veriship started off doing everything. You know, they started with a few developers and the developers wrote the things and the things they worked. And, <laughs> you know, or they worked on someone's box or someone else's box and stuff was good, things were happening, the company starts making money. And I get there and things were going good. Everything was good. The stuff was all working. The applications, we have, we have multiple applications that are integrated together that um, do different things. So the process, the life of a package, let's call it. What happens is that my team, the data ingestion team, takes the customer's invoice and their credentials. We go and log in and we download all of their invoices and we put them into our databases so that they can be picked up by the audit team and our contract engineering team and our data science team and process further down the line so that we can provide value to our customers. We do this for FedEx and UPS and DHL. And so each carrier has their own cluster of apps. So there's a downloader, an importer, an auditor, a reconciler that actually looks at the credits that were given back and matches them up to the packages so that we know whether they're credits we've got for the customer or credits that the customer received for themselves. And everything was working. It was all doing great. It was doing fantastically well. We were logging locally to local machines. Um, to every, every machine had several apps on it and everything was good. Until one day it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And we were down for a week solid, a whole week where we could not log in to the carrier, we could not get invoices from the carrier, we could not audit those invoices which have a 15 day time limit to get them audited and we were losing that money that for us and for our customer. So we did a post mortem, 
because postmortems happen in the world of development. And during the postmortem, we found several different types of issues that we had. But what it boiled down to was that we had CloudWatch because we use AWS and EC2 instances and we weren't using CloudWatch effectively. We were doing it completely wrong. I mean, the who, the what, the when, the where, the why, and the how. All of it was a whole hot mess. And when I tell you about it, so the who, nobody was checking the logs because I told you we were logging locally to the machines that the apps are running on. And so say for instance, you have the downloader that's doing its thing out on some server. And it's doing its thing, it's logging, it runs into errors, and all of that stuff is getting logged to a text file, .txt, plain text. And when you think about the volume of customers that we have, if I can kind of put it into perspective for you, one of our customers is a food shipping company. You know, they meal prep and they send stuff out. They have like 32 distribution centers across the country, and each of those 32 distribution centers have their own account with the carrier because they want to be able to keep those, you know, all lined up for their for their AR. And on those accounts, they get multiple invoices and multiple packages a day. They're shipping hundreds hundreds of packages per day. So we're getting thousands upon thousands of line items in a .txt file that cuts off and rolls over the next day. No one is looking through thousands and thousands of lines of plain text to search for an error where the error might have started. Because say for instance something happened on that app, we weren't finding it out until a couple of weeks later when customer engagement is like, hey, my customer said that they don't see their invoices, where are they? And so we don't know if the error happened yesterday, if it happened two weeks ago. So we have to search through all of those logs to try to track it down. And we were logging every single step. When I say what, it was everything from the clicking of the power, clicking of the, the submit buttons, clicking of the navigation buttons, we were logging it all and thought that we needed it all for our pride. We also were, I said we were doing it daily. So when you're logging to a .txt file, rolling a pender in such large quantities, it's best to do it in batches. And so our batches could take anywhere from five minutes to 30 minutes to get done to upload because of how many lines of data we were trying to get to hold on to. Where we were logging it? Locally on the machines. And so the machines, we would spin up different machines for the various apps because we're running probably four different machines with these apps in their own folders and those log files were in those folders with those apps. So if there was an issue with say FedEx, We'd have to go and figure out which one of the four FedEx machines it was happening on, look at the app itself, go find its log file, try to figure out which thread it was that was doing it. It was a whole entire cluster bleep. Mm -hmm. So why were we doing it that way? No, no, one, no one really knows. No one knew and we figured that we should be doing it better and how we were doing it with those rolling blog files, dot text files was just horrendous. So we, figured out how to use CloudWatch better. And holy crap, when I tell you it saved our whole lives, whoop, saved our whole lives. So CloudWatch has so many different features that I am a complete fan of. They allow you to centralize your logs, be able to do cross application metrics and everything. And let me tell you how it was that we went through these particular things, the who, what, when, where, and why, and how we fixed them with CloudWatch. So first of all, the what and the why part. I told you we were logging everything. Oh, I forgot about formatting. It was unformatted. <laughs> <laughs> it was unformatted. What I mean by that is that our logs, whenever we decided that we needed more visibility into something, someone was like, yeah, we should log that. There was no set structure for how to set up our logs. So some of them had time date stamps on them. Some of them had the thread on them. Some of them had the machine on them, but none of them were matching up in those .txt files because it was just all random. So we had to format our logs. And those text files are so unsearchable. Have you, have you tried to search through a text file for error? Man, how long did that take though? And was it painful? It was pretty painful for us. So now what we're doing with CloudWatch, also aside from CloudWatch, log levels. If you aren't using log levels, oh, you need to be using log levels. 
what we use, the levels we use, we use debug, info, error, and warning. And so debug is the stuff that you want to know because if you're sitting there in debug mode, you want to make sure that your app has hit every single step, right? You want to know that, yes, I got connected to the server. Yes, this happened. Yes, this happened. And no, that didn't happen. That debug is for the stuff, the minutia. That doesn't need to be out in your prod log development because it, it just will take up space. We also use um, info for the stuff that we need to make sure happens so we can count that. Like when we process an invoice, we want to know that the invoice was processed. We're tracking how many times we see that message. We use warn for things that are kind of troublesome, stuff we know about, you know, the, the, the errors that we know about but they don't stop the show. And then we use actual, we have error for the things that we want to like, hey, I'm on fire, Let, come fix me please. Our logs are now also formatted. I will show you what they look like now. Now, for depending on the app, um, they have the, they have like an ID for the machine, they have the date and time, they have the thread number, and the message is particularly is formatted. All of these different types of messages are formatted so that we know when we're going to go and look for a particular message, it's going to look like that. That's exactly what it looks like. That's the filter pattern. And now our logs are searchable. So I can show you, or I will show you in a little bit, exactly what that looks like in AWS. It's like being able to Google in your logs, and it's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. For the where and the how, what was wrong with our where was that local text file and to this day, rolling file appenders, I don't want to see them and I will try to figure out a way to help you not have rolling file appenders. They were per app, per machine and so you could have like two, three, four apps running on one machine and you don't know exactly what has happened but you have to go and remote in to each machine in order to figure out where the problem was. Because it could have just been with one machine, possibly, but we didn't know that. Or it could have been just with a whole app and all the machines were, were busted, but we didn't know that either because you have to log into each one. It took all day, all day. And they were batch appended. So the time, the timing of how, the feedback loop for when an error was happening was so long, so long. So they were batch appended. 30 minutes, I couldn't necessarily live do it for you. And the stuff from like two weeks ago that we didn't find out about until stuff down the line broke, it was a whole, whole hot mess. I keep telling you that because it was, oh God, it was. Now what we do is we're logging everything to the cloud. It's all in one place. We use groups, log groups and log streams. So the log group lets us know, we do our log groups by team. So my team is invoice consumption. There's an audit log group. A, uh, contract engineering log group and then we tack on which app it was and so now every single um, every single instance of this app is logging to this one place so instead of having to go and log remote into four different machines and scroll through folders and navigate through folders to find text files I can just look at every single machine logs in one location it's, it's been phenomenal and there's a constant push the longest delay that I've seen in the logs for CloudWatch is about five minutes. That is the longest. It's typically pretty up there. Like one minute maybe, I would think, maybe. And that's when you have a whole lot of stuff happening at once. So this was us before CloudWatch. When they would tell us, hey, something happened. Let's go track down this error. No one wanted to do that. We were, you know, like I quit you for today. I'm going home, I'm not doing this. My eyes are bleeding. Now with CloudWatch, do you see this smile? That is us. That is us. I'm a professional bug hunter now. Thank you, CloudWatch. I do not even, I don't even mind. What? Support ticket? I got this. It's great. So, my favorite things. The ease, 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 the ease of use and the integrations. We use our CloudWatch with HashiCore's Terraform. And we also use it with uh, Grafana. Have y'all heard of Grafana? I just want to spell that. Uh, G-R-A-F-A-N-A. -A -A. Hopefully I can spell on the, on the spot. That should be right. The platform for analytics and monitoring? That's it. Okay. So I'll show you how we use those things in tandem with um, AWS CloudWatch for our logging because 
if you can't see what you're getting out of your logs, then why are you logging it in the first place? It's all in one spot. I'm going to put more and more emphasis on it because you'll see the, the number of applications we have. And yes, it's a, oh, it'll blow your mind. The logs are searchable. This is another one of my favorite things, the Google. And cross app metrics. So the reason why this is important is because, say you have several integrated applications, like how we do. And I'm just going to talk about two that we wish that we would have known uh, about at the time of the great carrier debacle of 2018. So what happened is, you remember I told you we had a downloader process, an auditor process, a reconciliation process. The downloader wasn't able to navigate on to the carrier website. We didn't know that that was what the problem was. We thought that maybe we just needed to change um, the way that we were accessing an element ID tag and just you know throw in an or, like yeah, look for either ID tag number one or look for this version of it. What we did not know was that the remitting process, the remitter, it was also having trouble navigating. The reason we didn't know though is because the remitters and the downloaders are not on the same machines and they log locally to these random text files. They're not even built the same way because they were built at two different points in time by two different sets of developers. Had we known that this particular carrier's downloads and their remits were having problems, we could have checked to see that maybe it was a major change to the carrier's website that we needed to, to do a complete overhaul for. We could have figured out whether or not it was our connection because sometimes that's the case, but you don't know that if you can't see everything in one spot. If we were looking at the carriers, so we figured that it was just you know the FedEx carrier because UPS seemed to be working just fine, but we that took us a minute to go and put that all together. What we're able to do now is I can graph all of these metrics that we've collected across each other. So now I can see every single app in the process for each carrier. I can throw it up there. And I can tell you whether the problem is just one app or if it's across the whole carrier itself. I can tell you if it's one carrier or if it's both carriers. Because if it's both carriers, then that means it's actually us and not them. We weren't, we weren't able to do that because we weren't using CloudWatch effectively. So this has been major money and time saver for us. The last major change that this carrier made, we saw it coming two weeks in advance because they roll it out in batches and we were able to put in enough resiliency to where it didn't break us when they went ahead and went live with everything. I think we were down for like maybe two hours, maybe. And that's just like collective work on the thing. So this is a centralized logging is a game changer to me. So now let me, let me do you some show and tell, show you what I'm talking about. Oops, too far. So this is the CloudWatch console. It's a little tiny, but this is the CloudWatch console, and you can come in, click on logs, and it'll take it a second because my Wi-Fi is, you know, working. But in the mean of between time, it pulls up all the logs for all of the log groups that our company uses. This would be like, um, like I said, engineering, contract engineering logs here, the audit team logs here, invoice consumption team logs here, lo everyone logs here. I don't know what happened to my connection. Give me just a moment. There we go. Okay, an error occurred. So, give me just a second. We're going to try this one again. Give me a moment. Hmm. All right, so about that, 
that's exciting. To specify the region? No. Nope. Region that shouldn't have been our issue. It should have just logged me right on in. But for some reason, it doesn't like me. So bear with me for just a moment. It's a really great console. I really want you all to see it. Bam. All right. Oops, not that one. This one. Okay, let's go look at CloudWatch. So, for the CloudWatch console, once again, it's going to come up with all of those. All of this is your dashboard. You can configure all of this with Terraform if you want to, or you can do it here in this interface. We just like to use Terraform because it moves a little bit faster for us, and we have this ease of just doing Terraform init, Terraform plan, Terraform apply, ta-da, brand new metrics. So this is everybody that is logging. I'm going to go and take a look at invoice consumption. All of these apps, these are all the apps that I was telling you about. Several of them work together. And for all of these apps, they would be on machines, separate machines, and we would have to go and track them down and look through them. We, ran, we would run four or five different instances of some of these machines, depending on the time of the year. So you can imagine all that text, <laughs> all those text.txt files. It was, all, it was crazy. It was pretty darn wild. So let's take a look at one of these applications. So here I just, what I did was I clicked on the log group in order to get here. And you can go in and look at the different AMI images by the last event times and whatnot. But instead of doing that, I prefer to just hit search log group, which is that lovely big blue button. What just happened? Okay, hit that lovely big blue button and it pulls up all of our logs. And so for these logs, you can see now that they all look pretty well formatted. There's an ID number, a thread count here, the info, whether it's an info or warning, wh what kind of log it is, and then the different messages. And so what I really enjoy about this is that I can sit here and Google through them. I'm going to take this back out for a second. And I can pare this down to say, for instance, what has all happened in the past day. And it'll go through and search for that. Or you can do custom. What I like about custom is this relative so that you can do it. Let's say let's look at the past three hours. Since three isn't already up there at the top. We can look at the past three hours. Now, in order to search these logs, say that I want to look for all of the errors that have happened in the past three hours. It's best to do your searches with double quotes because... Um, it will pare down what you're looking for, especially if you're looking for a particular number sequence. So this is all of the errors that have happened in the past three hours. And these are not, not too shabby for my team anyway. So we can figure out what has happened here. What I want to show you is the same application with Grafana. So I'm going to slide. This is Grafana. Grafana is a dashboard for application monitoring. What we love about Grafana is that you can use various data sources. So we have um, that top line here, invet, uh, invoice ingestion metrics. We're pulling that data straight from the database, straight from SQL. We're pulling our queues straight from AWS SQS. Our invoice consumption apps is getting pulled right from these logs in CloudWatch. And what I like about this is that I can look at Grafana and figure out when something happened, what happened. And if I go here and I look for the same app that we're looking at, which is this guy, I can look back at the, over the time and see where errors occurred. So if I look back three hours ago, there sure were a lot of errors happening right here. So I can take that time, go back to AWS to go and look at that specific time 
and all those errors and now I can see what happened then I can take these error messages I can just copy the error message error posting credits error posting credit data I can copy that go and look at my code do like a control shift find in my code and it'll take me right to that error block and I can just scroll up and like okay you were supposed to be doing this this is what happened though instead of instead of you doing what you're supposed to do you erred on me at this point in the code so instead of having to look through all of our code and try to figure out what happened and trace it back and trace it back we were able to pinpoint it so much better because we are able to use this tool to do so another thing that I like about CloudWatch is that there are different types of filters that you can do is this this is not it just a moment You can do filtering with CloudWatch in order to get those wonderful metrics that we're using. And the way to do that inside of this particular um, interface would be to, over here, when you have your log group pulled up, your base log group, you can look at the different metric filters and just add one to it. So if I pick this particular guy who has no metrics, you click on the filters, there's no filters there. I can start to add a filter though. And by adding the filter, you can post in here your test pattern or um, or you can like pick from what would be available. This app, though, I don't think is actually doing anything, so it doesn't have anything for me to pull from. So I'm going to make custom logs for it and show you exactly what that looks like. Meh. I, I sent them to myself because I didn't I didn't trust them to be saved out here. Mm -hmm. So they weren't. Ooh, Drupal. Where is Drupal? All right, these will be our test logs. and you can put in a filter pattern so one type of filter pattern is just basically looking for a particular word so if i look for the word auto download because i know that it exists in this test pattern and then hit test the pattern it'll show you that you have one result that matched and it will look at all of that and ta-da logs let me make that bigger because it looks kind of kind of small is that better much better okay so I looked at auto download and so it pulled that that whole line content out of there for me you can also look for like a series of words um, let's say that I want to look for the whole thing like if I want to be super specific which I I suggest being highly specific with your with your log filtering very specific so unable to get auto download And so, as you see, it still grabbed the same guy, which is cool. One of my favorite things, favorite, favorite things. So, this gets kind of, you can increment your metrics by how many times it sees one of your log messages. So, if I wanted to count all of the errors, I could just search for the word error and increment the value by however many times I've seen the word error. Which is what happened when I showed you that three hour time block. Another thing that you can do with this, though, is you can parse a number out of your logging. And that comes in handy when you have thousands upon thousands of things to count. So for one of our processes, one of our applications, we are trying to count how many invoices we processed and how many packages we processed from those invoices. We thought that we were going to be able to just run, you know, a simple, yeah, count this message, count this message, count this message when it's done. But AWS has a throttle of 90,000 messages per minute. We thought that um, we were doing just fine and that we weren't going to breach that. Turns out we were trying to count 375,000 things in under a minute. And so they throttled us. And so we had to come up with a different way. What AWS provides is this ability to parse stuff out. But the log filter pattern looks a little bit different. Let me grab that and show you kind of what I mean. So, first, 
you need to instead of just doing just the straight text here you need I call them array brackets because square square braces you need them what this particular what this particular filter pattern will do is it will disregard it treats everything as a column every word it treats as a column separated by spaces and so the three ellipses will say hey disregard this information I don't care what what's here until you get to this particular spot so right now if I was to hit test pattern this would pull everything that has um, UPS as a carrier and package count as a type I just named them arbitrarily you can name them whatever you want so what happens when you get there once you hit once you hit submit and look at your test pattern what that will pull is it'll pull your user as a variable because it doesn't care to pull the spacer as a variable that's what the dollar sign indicates and then this count this dollar sign count you can use this number and increment your logs by that number so instead of trying to that's a hundred and ninety thousand some odd items that we would not have been able to just say yeah we process 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 now we can count it just submit the count and we can pull that right out of our logs and increment by that and what that looks like on Grafana for the app that we're looking at is this that's what it looks like we just we're able to grab it all count it and increment it all it's freaking amazing grab that all from the logs so this being said that's one way to get your filters is to go through the um, the interface and do it we prefer to use Terraform it's very easy this is also super easy but you have to like log in to CloudWatch every time and go navigate to the filter navigate to your application click on it press some buttons test it out meh meh so what we do instead is we Terraform our metrics this is a basic metric filter. Oh, she has a pointy thing. This is a basic metric filter. So the things that are required in order to do this, these are all the stuff in white is what you need that's required. You need this as your resource, AWS resource. This one is a particular, like I said, basic metric filter. So just something where you can put in a pattern and ta-da, see it. You need a unique name for your filter resource. What we do is we kind of abbreviate the app underscore filter one because some of them have like 13 filters. But the name of the app, filter one, that's unique enough. The name, this is the name of your filter pattern. Whatever you want it to be, whatever you want it to look like. What we do is we just put dashes into the actual filter pattern that we're looking for because that makes sense to us. So if the filter pattern was unable to find auto download, this would say unable dash to dash find dash the rest. This log group, for us, what we were just looking at, that would be that invoice consumption because that's my team and whatever the app name is. Or you can put whatever here, whatever you named your log group. That's what goes right there. For the metric transformation, we put in our namespace because since your namespace is kind of valuable to you, you don't want to uh, just have it everywhere. We, we insert it and inject it. Then the name of your metric. So whatever easy to spot name that you want to name it. This one to us would have been auto download button and incrementing the value. So you can increment the value by one, you can increment it by 100, however you want to do that. This part down here is very important, this default value. So if you don't set this default value, it'll like set itself to one or something and it'll mess up your logs if you, if you don't set that. But that's not actually in the documentation that I have linked on this slide. Um, I just want you to remember that. That's the reason why I put this snippet here so that you can know how to set it up. For the parse metric filter that we looked at, it's similar. You have all the same stuff in white, right? All that same stuff. And then you have your CloudWatch log metric filter because that's what this resource is. Your name of some other filter and your new filter pattern name. So your new whatever it is that you're looking for. This same square brackets. Also, yeah, these quotes, these quotes are all necessary. Otherwise, your stuff will not work and you'll be like, why isn't it working? And that's exactly what will, that, that will be your whole face. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. 
right here for a user where you see these asterisks around root. So you this asterisk will be like a wild card on either side of this word. You can just put one on like the back end side if you want to. So and then the spacer, the dash is recognized as its own thing. It doesn't just skip over uh, dashes like their delimiters. The delimiter is space. The delimiter is a space. If in your next um, column, what you're looking for is something that's tied together, and I actually think I spelled that wrong. I did column X and column Y, but what it's looking for is that it's looking for something that was probably separated by an underscore because underscores also will throw these out of whack. It doesn't like having underscores inside of this particular array of things. So you have to do an and. It will do ands and ors. And the other thing is this count. That's our variable. I could have used user as a variable, but I want to know, I only want to count the ones that belong to the computer that's running itself as a service. I don't care about Bob running his on his local machine. I don't want to capture that in my daily metrics. And then all the rest of the stuff is the same, except we're down here at value. Instead of using a number, you use dollar sign count and it'll increment your stuff by that count. Love that part. This is what the alarms look like because you can also set alarms based off of your filter metrics that you've created. So all of, all of that is necessary. This is the same name as your easy to spot name of metric that we, that we called. This is your description so that you know what your alarm is about and what you want the comparison to be. So they have different ones. They have greater than or equal to or they have uh, less than, they have an absence of, all kinds of different thresholds and operators that you can use. And you can change your period for the time that you're looking at something and you can change your thresholds up and down. So if you find that your alarms are a little bit too noisy, you can always up your threshold or try to figure out why they're so noisy in the first place and maybe fix the root problem. And yeah. This down here, these alarm actions, this is what you want it to do if this alarm is hit. So what we want it to do is we want it to Slack to us. So we created an SNS topic in AWS so that it will send us Slack messages. That's why we like Terraform. For the resources, all these links are live. So when you go out and go and find the slide, I have the link directly to CloudWatch documentation if you're interested in documentation. How to Terraform with CloudWatch and the Grafana documentation, because I think that Grafana is another very, 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 very powerful tool. Major keys, that's my guy. I, I need it like all I do is win <laughs> up there. <laughs> but first, log levels do matter. As far as logging, using them, log levels matter. You don't want your pride logs that you have to go and search through to be filled and inundated with small stuff that doesn't have to be out there all the time. Because if it's running fine, you don't need all that little bitty stuff. Centralizing your logs is probably one of the single greatest things that you can do if you have either multiple applications that are integrated with each other, or say for instance, if you're a consultant and you have 30 clients and all of, their cli all of your clients have different environments, you can start logging them all to CloudWatch. Your log group would just be the name of your client and then you, instead of you trying to figure out, yeah, so company X, they said that something was wrong with something, but they don't know where. Instead of you having to remote into company X's environment to figure that out, first you can go to CloudWatch. And then it'll tell you where it's happening at. Log strategically. Log the stuff that matters, the stuff that either you want to know that it has happened because if it has happened, stuff is working right, or you don't ever want to see this particular type of message so that you know where those breakpoints are. If you're logging just to be logging and no one is checking out your logs at all, what is the point? What is the whole entire point? Why are you even logging? Send alerts to people. Another. <laughs> if you are not checking on them, not monitoring them, why are you doing them? And metrics. Metrics make a world of difference. I told you that the great carrier debacle of 2018 had us down for a week it, over an error that we did not see. Like it happened, the change was happening a month in advance, but we didn't know because of what, how our logs were set up. 
And because we did not have metrics surrounding the performance of our applications, we didn't know if they were healthy or if they were crashing, if they were dying, if they were on the verge, none of that. Having metrics has allowed us to be so much more resilient, so much more nimble with change. And I think that I'm just going to continue to shout it from the rooftops and tell people about it. If you use centralized logging, this could be you. <laughs> this could be you. In chains. <laughs> In chains. <laughs> I mean, you're still at work, right? <laughs> Are there any questions thus far? I say thus far. This is the end. <laughs> So my slides are available at www.riadixon.com slash cloud watching, all one word. And they are constantly updated. I like to make sure that my slides are fresh and that they reflect um, the most useful things that I can put into them. So if there are questions or anything that you have that you would like to have seen, please let me know. I will get the slides updated and I like to use these as a resource so that people can kind of figure out how to go do things. That is all. I have been Rhea. Thank you very much. <laughs>